So Microsoft just dropped a patch, we can call it Tuesday bombshell, <laughs> fixing 90 different security flaws. And yeah, you heard that right, 90. That's like finding out your house has 90 broken windows, and oh, by the way, 10 of them are already being used by burglars to sneak in. Of these 90, 7 are rated critical, 79 are important, and 1 just kinda meh, moderate. But hey, they have patched it anyway. And uh, also don't forget about the 36 other bugs that they squished in Edge since last month. Apparently, keeping browsers secure is like playing a whack-a-mole. Now here's the kicker. Six of these 10 zero days are already being exploited out in the wild. It's like someone already knew about the broken windows and decided to have a field day. And here's a lowdown on these six nasties. CVE 2024-38189. CVSS score is 8.8. .8. This is called Microsoft Project Remote Code Execution Vulnerability and sounds like a fun way to let someone else run code on your system. But this one got an interesting twist. It's an elevation of privilege vulnerability in the Windows Update stack and it involves convincing an administrative user to perform a system restore. Yeah, it sounds a bit of the wall, but if there's a one thing social engineers love, it's making you do something you wouldn't normally do, like restoring your system while unknowingly giving them the keys to the kingdom. Microsoft, in its ever-optimistic fashion, says that exploitation of this flaw is less likely, sure, because it's not like cyber criminals have ever successfully manipulated users into doing something dumb, right? And now the official adversary doesn't quite dive into the nitty-gritty of how a basic user could manage to mess with system directory, which is where the magic happens. Now, before you panic and start unplugging your machine, here's the deal. There's no patch available yet, but the Microsoft's working on it, but in the meantime, they have provided some recommended actions. Keep in mind that these aren't going to fix the vulnerability, but they might slow down an attacker, give you some extra visibility into what's happening on your system, and maybe, just maybe, buy you some time. So what's the worst that could happen if this flaw gets exploited? Well, one possible outcome is that an attacker could mess with your integrity and repair utility. Imagine trying to fix corrupt Windows system files only to find out that your trusted tool isn't detecting the corruption anymore. Because, surprise, the attacker tampered with it. That's the kind of nightmare scenario this vulnerability could open up. And we got another zero day on our hands. CVE 2024-38178. CVSS score is 7.5. Named Windows Scripting Engine Memory Corruption Vulnerability. Because who doesn't love a good memory corruption issue? This one's a memory corruption vulnerability in the Windows Scripting Engine with a CVSS score of 7.5. It lets attacker pull off remote code execution if they can trick an authenticated user into clicking a malicious link. But here's the kicker. The target has to be using Edge in Internet Explorer mode. Yeah, Microsoft really found a way to bring Internet Explorer back into the spotlight, didn't they? This zero day was flagged by AHN Lab and South Korea's National Cybersecurity Center, which makes you wonder if it was part of the nation state APT operation. Unfortunately, Microsoft didn't share any indicators of compromise or other data to help defenders track down infections. Hold on to your hats, because CVE 2024-38193 is here, and it's making waves in the cybersecurity world. CVE 2024-38193, CVSS score 7.8, uh, the, named Windows Ancillary Function Driver for Winsock Elevation of Privilege Vulnerability. Elevate those privileges, why don't you? This vulnerability is really dozy. It's an elevation of privilege flow in the Windows Ancillary Function Driver for Winsock. In layman's terms, it means an attacker who manages to exploit this flow could potentially elevate their access to system privileges. That's right, folks, the kind of privileges that let you have almost godlike control over the system. 
Now don't bother looking for technical details or indicators of compromise just yet. They are still under wraps so far. The only thing we know is that this flow is actively being exploited out there in the wild. And it's like someone found a secret passage into your digital fortress and is taking full advantage of it. But wait, there's more. Microsoft isn't just waving the flag on the single issue. They are also ringing alarm bells about a sleeve of other critical severity vulnerabilities that could let attackers execute remote code, escalate privileges, execute cross-site scripting attacks, and bypass security features. If that list sounds like a hacker's wish list, it's because it is. It's a cocktail of nightmare scenarios just waiting to be popped open by the bad guys. So Windows sysadmins, get your patching tools ready and make sure you are on the top of these critical uses. The last thing you want is to be next headline because someone exploited this vulnerability and turned your system into their personal playground. And we have got another zero day on our hands, CVE 2024-38106. CVSS score 7.0. Windows kernel elevation of privilege vulnerability Kernel box, the gift that keeps on giving. This one's a real race to finish, requiring an attacker to exploit a race condition. Fancy tech speak for two processors trying to access the same resource at the same time, but one of them wins and other gets left out in the cold. This vulnerability falls under CWE591, sensitive data storage in improperly locked memory. In simpler terms, it's a bug where sensitive data gets stored in a place it shouldn't be because the memory wasn't properly locked down. The adversary for CVE 2024-38106 doesn't give us much to go on, but we can make an educated guess. It's likely similar to CVE 2023-36403, where a flaw in how Windows kernel handles locking for register virtualization allowed attackers to manipulate registry operations. Essentially, this bug lets Windows redirect crucial registry read-write operations from a global level to user-specific locations. It's like having a secret door in your house that only opens for certain people, but someone figured out how to get the key and open it anyway. Here's a twist. Windows Server 2012 isn't getting a patch for this vulnerability. What's up with that? Either this vulnerability was introduced in later code base, or Microsoft is playing a risky game of let's hope no one notices. Either way, it's a curious decision, like leaving the front door of a high security vault wide open and hoping no one will try to break in. So if you are managing a Windows Server 2012 system, keep an eye out for this one. It's a reminder that even the most secure system can have their vulnerabilities and sometimes the fixes or lack thereof can be as intriguing as the flaws themselves. And that's a wrap for today's video. If you find this content helpful or just enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps me out and subscribe to stay updated with all my latest videos and get notified when new content drops. And if you want more in-depth info and updates, be sure to check out my blogs for the full scoop. And thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.